Hi, my name is Lorraine Gauvin. I'm from Haiti. I grew up in Bowie, Maryland, and I'm a painter. Well, I've been drawing since the age of four or five, but professionally, this will be my 11th year playing, like professionally being an artist. I started painting because I watched my dad paint when I was a little kid. So since the age of four, I've been drawing on sketchy notepad like, and selling it to my dad's friends. So I think it was like my dad's influence. And I think my country has so many artists. artists and I think I was influenced by just having a artistic culture. So I realized that I was able to make a living just by painting and doing what I love. I believe six years ago, um, not really on that dot, like, but waking up and knowing that you work for yourself and that you have to have faith in your own purpose and that's what you have to go by and just having dedication and everything and being your own boss. Once I realized that I could wake up and do that every day and not have to worry about nobody else but my own, you know, work that I have to put in. It wasn't so much of the money. It's really about, like, the stability in your own craft. Coming to America, um, I was 13, 14, and I did not know how to speak English. So it was a little bit of, like, um, language shock, cultural shock. You know what I mean? And I also had to be this teen that was developing and dealing with my own thing and missing my country as well. It was hard adapting because as I grew up and I've learned to know who I am now and I'm realizing I'm very much expressive, you know? I love to express myself. Um, and I love to speak my mind, you know? And when you come to a country when you don't know how to speak the language, it doesn't matter how much of your mind that you want to speak. You can't, you know what I mean? So you shelter yourself like you basically a prisoner of your own mind trying to figure out, you know, like how to express yourself or not being able to express yourself for that matter. So I went a long time, you know, knowing how I felt but not being able to express how I felt, you know? So I think for a long time, I used to be like, I used to tell myself, you telling me I don't know how to speak English, but I know two other language. And then, so that used to be my comeback. Like, I know I'm smart. I just not smart in that specific thing. So now perhaps people would look at me and be like, yeah, she thinks she's all that, or she just so blunt, she just, Talk like, you know, she just come out of nowhere and say whatever's on her mind. And I guess when people don't know who you are and what you, where you come from and what you dealt with, it's easy to judge and say, you know, she's rude or whatever. But I don't want to be that person that I used to be. And I didn't have a reason to be that until, like, it was the language barrier. So I don't have a reason to be that person no more. And... When I have a moment to speak my mind, I speak my mind. Um, but I'm very respectful about it. I'm very, I, I respect people's feelings, but I also don't let people walk over me. And that's, a, that's from having to let go of a lot of feeling that I felt and not being able to express it. So it was a really hard process adapting. But I'm okay now, I mean, um, I think it made me have to express myself in other ways, which was art, you know what I mean? Um, I always thought that um, when you felt something that was like, as, like anger, it has to come out angry. Um, art has taught me that anger can also come out as something as beautiful as this, you know what I mean? And, it doesn't, love can come out like something like this. 
So to me, art has been an outlet for me to evolve in the American world, kind of like to, and be able to express myself through this until I learn to speak the language myself. Because my dad was an artist, um, my family already knew that I had it in me, so I didn't have to tell them because I used to paint all the time. And to be honest, there's a lot of family I would like, I'm so happy I have the family that I have because my auntie, despite being foreigner, you know, foreigners are like, you gotta be a doctor, you gotta be a lawyer, you gotta be like, you know what I mean? But my family wasn't like that. They invested in me. I remember my auntie buying me my first kit, my first paintbrushes, my canvases. It was like $500 worth of stuff. And again, you never know what you can do for somebody once you buy, like you give them the tools to be who they have to be in life or their purpose will, like you know, the purpose align. Like if I had a family that just was totally against what I was doing, I probably would have to be fighting myself to do it and fighting against them too, and fighting against society. Because I wouldn't have that, um, I would have an insecurity because the first people that's supposed to support me don't support me. So it would be hard, harder, you know, than it's already, that it would have been, have been. I think, <laughs> I think even the strongest people with the biggest company have moments of doubt. I've sure had my moments of doubt, you know. Um, most people don't know, but I didn't, I didn't always believe in myself. It's almost like people help me believe in myself. And some people won't say that. They'll be like, well, I always believe in myself. That's not true. I had a lot of people that helped me believe in myself. And um, when it's genuine, you can hold on to it. Not when people are just telling you what you want to hear, but because it was genuine and they actually believe in what I had to do, I can retain that now and still have it to hold on and still, you know, as a price. Um, but I, I didn't always believe in myself. Um, I also had um, run running with life that, like, cause again, they call it a struggling artist. Um, I know we wanna be all positive and be like, well, I'm not a struggling artist. Um, <laughs> I don't think struggle comes from money sometimes. It's not always money. So sometimes we make money, we don't make money too, but the struggle for me um, as an artist is the mental capacity it takes to know that, one day, some, whatever the case might be, that one day somebody, you gotta believe in that one day somebody's gonna wake up and buy your painting. Like you just gotta have that faith. And I didn't always have that faith, you know? I used to argue with people like, you think people wake up and just wanna buy painting? And it's like, if you're telling it to somebody that believes in you, they're looking at you like, damn, you don't believe in yourself. You know, I had people that I shown that I didn't believe in myself enough and they let go of that battle because nobody want to believe in you more than you have to believe in yourself. So I had to learn that, damn, if everybody's believing in me, damn, I have something. And then the minute I realized my worth, that's it. It was um, the takeoff, you know? So my career is like the, um, I gotta do what I gotta do. The, oh, I actually think I can do this. The, wow, I'm gonna put more effort into me and I'm gonna invest into myself. I'm gonna put more time, I'm gonna sacrifice a lot, you know? Until I did that, I probably wouldn't have the confidence that I have now as an artist because the confidence doesn't come from looking at my painting and looking at what people are saying no more. Like, if we do the math, the confidence that I used to get to have to be the artist that I am now, I don't need that from people no more because 
I have to build that for me now. You know what I mean? So I'm my own person that has to build that confidence for myself now. Like, again, it was a takeoff. Like, I would never ap not appreciate that I did use people to build my self-esteem. And most people wouldn't say that. And I mean, like, career-wise, like, you know. And now that I'm where I need to be mentally, and I feel like the GOAT, like I am the shit, um, I don't have moments of let go no more. Like that would be, like I would do, I would lose any limb and I still will find a way to paint. Because I don't think it's these that's, that's, that's making me a genius. I think it's the way my mind works, you know? Um, so you can take off everything and I still be like, you know, be able to be an artistic person that I am. Um, being Haitian and having some cultural background, you know, and being raised in a family where like when you wake up, you got to say hi, kiss everybody on the cheek. It doesn't matter if you had a fight, you know, you still got to come in the house kiss strangers that you don't even know because that's the kind of respect you have so it creates a you know what even though i'm mad that's for the house but before i get out i gotta make sure we good when i come in i gotta make sure we good so the family aspect of being haitian when i look at other people and not that I judge them, but I'm looking for some roots too. You know what I mean? And when I f find families that have cultural roots and cultural background, I'm like, I can relate. You know what I mean? Not even because of the food, because of everything, but the importance that you're giving family. Because back home, where I'm from in Haiti, we love family and family is everything, you know? So I think it's, more so the beauty, more so than anything, more so the culture, I think is the family um, dynamic that we retain um, no matter what. That's what I think with me going outside of the world. Like, I got to have it. And people that are around me got to have it, you know? Um, but yeah, on that level. During the photo show, I wanted to be stabbed, like, so I have an alter ego. I have, this is Art Larea is the artist, you know, that you see online and everything. And then you have Lorraine, which is me, you know, and I love to be glamorous. I love to go out and look fancy. I also like to, some people don't know, I like to sing and I like to write music and, um, that's most of the things I'm a little bit shy about because I feel like I've already um, reached the level that I want to reach at as an artist, you know, that's a painter. And it's kind of like a little scary to dabble into singing and being into the music field. Uh, so that painting is a little controversial. And I also told the director that. Um, because um, when I painted it, which by the way was a commission piece that the client requested, you know? So it is not something that I even was thinking about doing. But that's not something that I was gonna shy away from doing neither because after he explained to reasoning why he wanted to do it. But that's not how I went online because when I posted it, it's technically like basically the Neg Maon, which is basically the first known slave to be free. Um, and it was the American flag. And then the, so wait, it's the Neg Maon, the Haitian flag, and then the American flag. And I specifically put it like that so people wasn't like, you know, you got the, the Haitian flag in the back and then they, they're assuming that this is the placement for it so it's last and everything. So I made sure it was in the front, you know, so it could be next to the neck mountain because the guy is American Haitian and I understand he's from both places. 
So, but when I posted it, that's not how people felt. It was definitely not the most welcoming painting. And um, I was told, and until this day, after like being basically two months of being posted, I still have comments and it's not too positive neither. I have, I have a lot of positive, I'm lying, but also a lot of negative comment because they feel like that this iconic man shouldn't be next to American anything because American people have done us so wrong. So in their head, it's like, why would you want uh, an Asian symbol next to an American thing? I understand both part, but I also have to have people understand that they also have to think about who I am and what I represent. And I've always represented Haiti in the most positive light. And everything I do is to represent Haiti in the most positive light. So they would never have to tell me that I'm doing something wrong. I would check myself before I even get to do it because I think like that. And I'm the artist. And I also, also tell people that have any say or anything that they want to say about that, I tell them you either become an artist and make some shit you're proud of and that you feel like is what should be done or you find another fucking artist to do it.